in the bottom line of my whole thing, there's there's homes out there. There's homes mm -hmm. out there, and people are just complaining that there's no homes out there. But I'm looking at them. There are homes. Mm -hmm. It's the, this uh, the the weird thing of waiting for that perfect one that someone else did all the work in, so that they don't have to. Um, just kind of blows my mind because you're not going to get a deal if you're waiting for that. That's the that's the house that doesn't get the deal. You're listening to the Ottawa Real Estate Podcast with your hosts, Paul Stevenson, David Warren, and Greg Campbell. Let's see what's going on in the world of real estate today. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the Ottawa Real Estate Podcast. Very loud. Your go-to resource for all things related to the dynamic real estate market in Canada's capital city. Join us as we explore market trends, buying and selling strategies, investment opportunities, and more. Our industry professionals will provide valuable insights, expert advice, and insider secrets to help you navigate the auto real estate landscape with confidence. Stay informed, make informed decisions, and unlock the potential of the Ottawa market. Welcome to the Ottawa Real Estate Podcast, <laughs> where your real estate dreams come true. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Paul Stevenson. I'm here with Greg Campbell. I'm here with David Warren. Gentlemen, how are we doing today? Unlocking the potential. <laughs> real estate market <laughs> come, come listen to us and oh, unlock man. your potential <laughs> oh, oh. always fun uh how we doing how was the weekend good everything's great on my end i actually was out with some buyers that uh hadn't been out for a while so that was fun and of course both properties got offers within a couple of hours of us seeing the property we mm -hmm. decided not to offer on it and they are now conditionally sold um, other than that, I had a friend in from, uh, Vancouver for a couple of days. That was pretty fun. And now it's just back to, uh, back at it. Lots of action this week. Lots of things to do. Yeah. That seems to be the norm. The, uh, now you have it, now you don't type home. It's uh, I've had, yeah, that last week it's been all every pre-approved client. We're putting an offer in on this home. The next day we didn't get it. Uh, or later that day we didn't get it. It seems to be, uh, yeah, hot to trot right now. A lot of buyers, not a lot of sellers, as we said last week. And uh, Greg, I know you have some stats that hopefully, uh, yeah, and I have some hopefully go along that. with that. But and I have some comments on that comment. But I'll I'll let uh, let's 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 find out about David's weekend first, shall we, <laughs> David? <laughs> Greg dives right in the deep end. <clears throat> That's fine. You can continue on. I'm, I'm too tired to uh, really contribute much. So. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh yeah, I've had a weird morning as well here. So miraculously feeling <laughs> feeling uplifted suddenly um did it, paul were, are, were you were you were you segueing into me just getting right into stats right now is that what he was no well sure if you he want didn't, to i mean it's good... he doesn't care about my weekend so no i'm just joking <laughs> well great you great how was your weekend? weekend well i was working on real estate as of 6 a.m this morning let's get into it <laughs> yeah that's it um, um man not a lot of likes okay so hold on here Let, this is this is what i posted up so there's stats for orleans uh as usual when i get back into stats i always tend to start there because it's where i live so i'm gonna read the stats and then i'm gonna read what i added to my post um this is for orleans and uh let's get into the usual format that i do we'll start with Detached homes, there's currently nine, this is uh, four weeks ending June 12th, four weeks, sorry, four weeks ending June 2nd. Yes, yes. Active, there's 98 active detached homes, averaging 41 days on market, with an average list price of 902,000. There was 12 conditionally, there's 12 currently conditionally sold, averaging 66 days on market at an average price of 739,000. There was 93 sold in the last four weeks, averaging 29 days on market at an average price of 795,000. Last year, same time, 90 sold in the four weeks, 14 days on market, 840K was the average price. So you look at that, uh, the average price, the average sold price of the last four weeks being 795, that seems low versus the active at 902. Mm -hmm. Now, again, I have to say that I leave in the high ones and I leave in some of the low ones. I, I only take out the real outliers that make absolutely no sense, but there's a lot of, uh, there's currently a lot of big over a million dollar properties for sale in Orleans right now, which is bringing that number up to 902. Um, anyways, interesting. 
Let's now, go how come into the sold, towns. Sorry? Sorry, how come how come the sold price is so much higher than the conditionally sold currently? Yeah, it's just I don't know. It's just what it is. Some of the lesser homes, you know what I mean? They could be sitting in the fives, those mm -hmm. conditionally sold. Could be a fixer upper. Yeah, to, to go through and kind of like take out the ones that just don't really fit, I was just thinking it's it's too much to be doing. Um, yeah. We need the highest and the lowest out, and then you keep the rest, you know? That's pretty much what I do. That's pretty yeah. much what I do. So, but that is low. You're right. The 739 is low. The 795, I think, is also a little bit low from solds. I mean, 840 last year, and then 902. So I think that'll, you know, that's an interesting number now. This and this includes May sales because we haven't, the May stats haven't come out that's yet, May, right? This is all May in Orleans. Okay. So monthly stats for Orleans, towns and semis. Currently 49 active, averaging 36 days on market at an average price of 652,000. Conditionally sold, we have seven, averaging 14 days on market at an average price of 621,000. Sold in the last four weeks, we had 57. Averaging 18 days on market at an average price of 600,000. At the same time in 2022, we had 58 sold, almost exactly the same, averaging 12 days on market with an average price of 653,000. So the active price now is the same as the sold price in 2022. Hmm. But the solds were 600 and the conditionally solds are 621. So that, that is very indicative of what I'm seeing in the market for towns and semis because it's still the hot hot market right everyone can kind of shop around there um and it's clear that you know sold versus conditional versus active and last year i mean you know we could hit that 653 or 650 number again um by the end of june depending on on what happens this month we're definitely think, trending that way i mean that's yeah. a pretty big uh pretty big jump and, and very close in numbers i mean the number of units sold basically identical i know uh to 2022 off by one and days on market only off by six Almost days so less than you know less than a week um, which is wild yeah you know it's uh and and, pr and price only off by eight point what's that 8.2 percent off in price there's david the human calculator doing this thing <laughs> i've got okay. a calculator not human yeah. <laughs> don't don't spoil it Make it's like our teachers when you're a kid calculator. But, hey what, what do you think you're gonna have a calculator in your pocket everywhere you go <laughs> yes okay so this one's this one's interesting too monthly stats orleans for condos active 26 active mm -hmm. condos averaging 45 days on market at an average list price of four hundred seventy-five thousand. we currently have five conditionally sold averaging 17 days on market at an average price of 419 sold in the last four weeks, 47, averaging 38 days on market at an average price of 450. Hmm. And last year, same time, there was 51 sold, 13 days on market, same price, 450,000. So the number of units and the price is exactly the same as last year for condos in Orleans. Days on market is just uh, a little bit more. But with the conditional sales, we're seeing that, that number coming down. Price seems to be down. Um, which is interesting. Those, the big ones, the 475 average price, there's a big one at uh, Inlet Private down the hill, the Brazil, the towers that overlook the uh, Ottawa River. Hmm. That one's, uh, I think that one's listed in the eights. So that's bringing that price up, the, four, the average price. So I think, you know, if, if we were to remove that, we'd be closer to this, um, you know, between the 400 and 450 range. But I like the 419 conditionally sold. I think that's where a lot of these should sit. Um, but the nice ones clearly are still still going for more. Uh, rentals, guys, check this. 26 active, 32 days on market average, 3,000 average price. That's for the active ones. There's none conditional. We had 49 rented, averaging 19 days on market, 2,500, and rented in 2022, the exact same thing. Hmm. And I went wow. back and I looked at that just to make sure I wasn't making a mistake an update yeah and uh I, I i look at that and i still want to go and look at it again but i did a triple check and that seemed to be right so that's uh that's it 2500 is the average price right now of rented and that's the same as last year while the active ones are averaging 3000 that's for some bigger singles that are obviously you know looking for bigger dollars mm -hmm. but um my comment was this, I'm going to read exactly what I read, because if you look at this like detached and you look at the town semis, 49 active, 
98 active, average days on market, 41, 36. So this is what I wrote. Stats for Orleans, da, 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 da. what does this mean? It means that things are still moving and prices have continued to steady increase close to last year's numbers over the same period. House hunters are now accustomed to the rates and no longer complaining about, I wish I had 1.9% financing. The only complaint we get is that there is no inventory. While this may be true on a macro level, if you look, there, there are good homes for sale. The ones that are sitting may need some work, but have you ever heard of negotiating a great price and doing some work in the house to make it a home? Seems like most buyers don't want to do that. If you're waiting for the perfect home with everyone, everything done to perfection, guess what? There are 20 plus buyers looking for the same thing. So be ready to bid high and hard if you want to win. Don't miss out on opportunities that are right in front of you if you're shopping for a new home. Because clearly there's properties available mm. and people just aren't offering because they want everything done. I mean, I was out, I was out shopping with a client the other day and with the, with the family and the place was great. Move in ready. Um, like actually fantastic, but they were still commenting on like wanting to change certain things before they moved in and everything. And it's one of those things that was like, that's a great idea, but it was like, it wasn't necessary to like negotiate. It's not a negotiating tool. You know what I mean? Cause the place was immaculate. But they were like thinking that they already had to do changes in something that was nice too. So there's so many different types of personalities out there shopping from what I'm seeing. Yeah, I wonder how many people are kind of subconsciously also nervous about buying and they just kind of create those problems in their head. Like, well, you know, in their head, they're thinking, well, if everyone, if everyone likes this property, we're going to get into a bidding war. And they kind of nitpick on, well, you know, the, the trim isn't exactly what we were hoping for. And you know, we were hoping for more of a sliding door than the French doors, um, you know, just kind of nitpicking. Do you find, Greg, that maybe more with first-time home buyers that maybe they, having not gone through that process, they're, they're, they maybe are too particular? Or do you find that's with all buyers? Uh, first-timers, for sure, especially if the family's involved, way too particular. Um, and it's not like, you know, you don't, you can only push so much. You just kind of give advice and explain what can happen and what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, even the, even the clients that I was out with on, um, on the weekend, we saw a great home. Now, you know, they've been taking their time, which is fine. And, um, you know, when I walked into it, I was like, man, this is like, this is going to sell. And, uh, you know, we walked away, we were going to go back with their, with their family, but, um, but it sold same day in a couple of hours. And then there was another one that uh, it, it was just listed on a street that I recently sold one on in Orleans. And um, they got an offer yesterday and my, my guy was going to bid on it, but he, and he ended up deciding against it because uh, it faces the highway and he just wasn't too keen on that. So that, I mean, that's one thing. And that was what caused the problem with the, with the timeline of how long it took to sell the one that I had listed. It's not for everybody, but I mean, that place was great, great price, great value. Four ninety nine nine. It was sold like twelve hours. Greg, you had one last week that was. I think you told us was listed at eight nine nine with Luca. Yes, and you mentioned you were going to tell us the result yes, of that. I know guy. we talked about it, but what uh, what ended up happening with that? We got ten offers and it sold for a hundred thousand over. Hmm. Yeah, that was a really good deal. It was uh, it was a great story too. Original owner, just it was a really like emotional kind of uh, transaction, and everything just worked out how we wanted it to and how they wanted it to. And I think I said it last week on the show that, you know, last summer when we kind of started the process, I was suggesting, I mean, at that time I was saying like 850, it'll sell for 850 at the most, at the most. Mm -hmm. And then when we looked at the market changing this year, we said, let's just go for it listed at nine, which was a good price for that house. I thought we thought we may get, may get 925, 950, but, uh, a million wasn't even really on the radar. It was kind of like, yeah, ha ha. Wouldn't it be funny if we got a million dollars? And then that's what we got. And I how many showings? Few... How many showings on that? Sorry, sorry, Paul. We sorry, had no. um, how many showings did we have on that? I think we had twenty. We had twenty showings and ten and offers, had, and we had about twenty groups through the open house on Sunday. Okay. Yeah. So quite a bit of traction for, uh, or traffic rather for, 
a nine it's a it's listing. a crazy it very lots of traffic great neighborhood and there's properties just don't come up that often there so we kind of leverage mm -hmm. that as well um but we did learn that there's more people that uh that are looking to sell we're going to go visit a couple properties out there and uh through the open house we already have some buyers in the area now too um yeah part of our new uh, marketing campaign was uh very effective so we're happy about that but yeah great uh great deal but that's that's the way but anyway so what i'm saying in the bottom line of my whole thing there's there's homes out there there's homes mm -hmm. out there and people are just complaining that there's no homes out there but i'm looking at them there are homes mm -hmm. it's the this uh the the weird thing of waiting for that perfect one that someone else did all the work in so that they don't have to um just kind of blows my mind because you're not going to get a deal if you're waiting for that that's the that's the house that doesn't get the deal that's that gets everybody bidding on it right yeah i noticed too in your stats it seems that the active price points are all about five percent higher than the average sales in the last month like it seems like the active sales are, or the active listings are just a little just that little yeah. nudge a little nudge higher you know which uh i think also probably people when they see the sales like okay it sold for you know 699 that's kind of what they're expecting to pay and then they you know they see that same house same street well different house same street uh you know 25k nice one paul sneezing right perfect now, timing <laughs> 25k higher yeah um and then maybe they get discouraged and yeah and you know mm -hmm. Small it's, things like that. It's true. And there's and there's still a lot of that going on where people are confused about where to where to list. And you know, even the agents are, you know, it's always you're always you're hesitant thinking like, am I listing this at the right place? We have one coming up down the hill in Orleans right now. Super unique. It's got an extension on the roof. It's got a sunroom that was made on the back. Um updated. We just uh, we're launching it, I think, on Wednesday. But it's going to be the highest price listing ever on that street by a long shot. Not for the neighborhood specifically, but for that street. And so, you know, there's a lot of things that we had to take into consideration when we were talking with the seller about how we wanted to promote it and where we wanted to price it. She's, uh, you know, thankfully she's on board with, with what we did. We think we're, we think we're high enough where we think we're where it belongs, not too high, but it was, it took a while for us to kind of agree to where to put it. And we're hoping that it works. I, I want to go back quickly to what we were saying before about the, uh, you know, kind of nitpicking or, or anal over analyzing. And I think for us to being in the industry and dealing with it every day and dealing with buyers and dealing with sellers, like it, we kind of become numb to the, the, um, stress factors that are involved like if you're if you're buying a home every you know 10 years like there's a lot of pressure involved mm -hmm. like you're, you're overthinking everything you, like you said you might have parents or other people in your family kind of influencing you at the same time so those small things probably seem bigger than than they are just because yes. everything is amplified right like you're 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 on like you're turned on for not literally but you're on for that uh for that time frame and everything seems so much more not dramatic, but like way more impactful than it might be. Like you said, like, oh, well, they need to replace this. They're just thinking like, shit, I don't want to deal with that once we move in. I just want to move in and and live our it's, lives. It's you know? true. So and I mean, it, it's a very good point. Like you can't, I can't just push that, you know, way of thinking aside. Um, you know, when you're in the business, obviously like us, you, the three of us can kind of go into a house within a couple of minutes. I'm like, yes, okay, this is this is fantastic or we need to do this but it's not you balance it out price versus work reward long term um it's just uh it's challenging when i just find that you know a lot of the conversations you have people can't see through that more now than in the past i think some of that has to do with people not being as you know really as uh handy or skillful at you know, the trades are doing some of the work themselves. Um, you know, so they kind of over to your point, they're over analyzing it, thinking that something's larger a project than it actually is because they just don't even know sure. where to start and they don't know what, you know, and they, and that kind of that fear of, uh, you know, then having to find a contractor or whatever it may be. Whereas, you know, as you said, years past people, you know, learn to fix things themselves or, or, you know, and as we kind of come more and more into this digital age of everyone just, 
working from a desk that um, people aren't learning those those basics uh, of using tools and then and then the financial side of it you know I know we touched on it last week of um, you know people not leveraging certain programs like purchase plus improvement so they're putting all their money for the down payment because of where prices are at first time home buyers saving up for such a long period of time to be able to afford that down payment and then kind of worried well I don't have the money to update those counters or get mm-hmm. different appliance or f- update some flooring or p- even paint the place because uh, they've just every nickel is into that down payment and closing costs. Yeah, I mean, there's there's that too. But what I'm saying is the people that are going for the ones that are perfect mm-hmm. can get something that's 50000 to $75,000 less in the same house. Right. And it only cost them 10,000 to fix it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but you're, but you're right. And, and a lot of people won't take time to even consider that or ask like our help or ask somebody's help to find the trades people to do that work. They It's just overwhelming for them. So yeah, mm-hmm. it's just, it's, it is a different mentality. Um, I mean, and there's not much you can do about it, but I mean, all these homes that I see that I walk into that need work there, like you can live in there, mm-hmm. you can live. Mm-hmm. it's not it's not like it's a it's a flip or something you know i mean because on the other end of the spectrum if it's a flip that one's also going in multiple offers quickly right to the contractors there's just these a lot of homes that are just stuck in the middle that no one seems to want and then everyone's complaining about there being a shortage of homes right now mm-hmm. so anyways. uh we got a couple of questions from the episode last week and uh, I'll touch on these quickly, gentlemen. Um, with strong GDP data released today, I think there's a greater chance of a rate hike next week. It would be interesting to see what happens to the housing stats after the rate hike. Hard to argue. I think, you know, with the way things are shaping, uh, we probably will see a quarter point increase. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I think especially with the... I know I sent uh, Stephen an article with the, it had the government of Canada five year bond yield just from January till now. I think with the fixed rates going up again, people are just so comfortable now with like a rate going up. I don't think really, like you said, Greg, I don't think it shifts people's perspective as much as it did like, you know, a year ago. It's like, oh my gosh, it went up again. Like people started to panic. Uh, mm-hmm. I think now, like a quarter point, even a half point, it's like, okay, went up again. Like, let's keep shopping maybe that'll deter some people i think it will slow maybe some of the buyers down but those people that are shopping for that you know 699 749 type home um you know those semis greg like you're saying in orleans or what have you they're i think they're just going to see it as more of an opportunity that there might be less buyers and i think it'll i I don't think it's going to slow the train down but i do think we probably will see an increase and if we don't see an increase i think it's it will accelerate things even further and the yeah, stats they're... come out today, right, Greg? Today or tomorrow? So I'm interested. Yeah, to I was a little disappointed. I was hoping that I'd have them today, but I think um, if they do come out today, what I what I'm gonna I'm trying I'm trying to be better, guys. I'm trying to be better here. <laughs> I will be better here. I will be better. Um, rearranging some stuff here, but I'm thinking that for things like the stats, because uh, I don't like bringing them up. I'd like just to have them right away. So what I'm going to do is uh, if they come out today, I'm going to do a video. Maybe uh, Steven can tag it to the end of the, to the end of this, mm. you know, so that it's included in the show. Good idea. Uh, I, I think, I think from the rate perspective, I think there will be an increase, unfortunately. Um, you know, GDP, like you alluded to, Paul was at three, an annualized 3.1% um, for GDP growth, which was way uh, higher than they were expecting um continued strong job market it's um i think with everything kind of caked in it's i'd be shocked if if there isn't unfortunately um because it's just going to again like stimulate the housing market even further if if there is a continued pause with with how many people you know like you said kind of become accustomed to where we're at for payments and for living expenses uh that it's kind of just been chugging along and there was that obviously that dip in, in prices we saw in activity, but it's kind of right back, right back to where we were. Actually, I had a conversation with someone fixed rate of five oh four last week, and they were thrilled. Like that's yeah, that's, that's now the response. It's no longer like what? It's oh, that's great. Like yes, mm-hmm. that's perfect. 
Um, but as you know, like you pay, said, as like as six you months know what ago, you're paying. That's yeah, like, that's it's the, the payment. Thing. It's the payment. You're right. It's like, the, the payment. payment was like with they me, were fine with the payment. I'm at the, I was, I'm at a five, seven, five. And I'm like, I'm like, okay. Like I know that I'm paying that for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. It's fine. But you, you just got to get it through your head. Like that's, that seems high, but that's what, what had to be done. Mm -hmm. Um, another question here. And I, I kind of talked about this before we came on the show that, uh, we should put this together, but DH says, could you guys talk about the numbers for first time home buyers to qualify for a mortgage right now? And some examples of what you can afford at different income levels Ooh, that's minus your one. down payment. Could you also talk about actual affordability after they bought a house? I've been dipping my toes into the idea for years, but the homes that I think I can afford are unappealing and would put me in a financially precarious position. So I think we should put together an actual chart, maybe like, you know, here's your income level, maybe, you know, monthly debt load, and then kind of what you could qualify for, for a home. Uh, I think it would be worthwhile, but it is as cliche as it sounds, DH, it's, it's literally different person to person. Like you could have two people, same job, uh, same tenure, et cetera, but maybe have different debts or, you know, spouse has additional income or, you know, maybe one of them gets additional bonuses or like everyone's income is different. Everyone's debts are different. So it really is a case by case. So even if we do that chart, which I'll put together for next week, I think that, you know, it's, it's still going to be complete hypotheticals because nobody's going to fit the profile of what we're putting, but it'll give you at least a rough idea of what's, what's available, what, what you can afford. Yeah. For DH, the only real way we, you know really how we'd be able to position or, or put it to paul's point is every debt is all, also calculated different not you know from a, how a unsecured line of credit is calculated to say an osap loan or um car payment you could have a ten thousand dollar balance on a car payment and a ten thousand dollar you know balance on the line of credit they're both calculated differently uh so really when you're factoring we've said it before is you know factoring as if there's no debt um, and you're in the four to four and a half times your income is what the loan amount that you can qualify for on a, on a, fr on a freehold, uh, meaning no condo fees. So, um, that's something that people don't realize that comes into play is not just the mortgage payment, um, but the stress test as well, as well. So two, two percent and two percent over what that rate is. So using Paul's rate of 504, you know, really are qualifying based on payments as if you're paying 7.04%. Um, and then you're taking account property taxes, condo fees, uh, you know, heat and, and kind of all of that caked in. So, uh, but if you're looking at rough numbers, uh, that four to four and a half times, and that goes for really, um, whether you're a first time home buyer or you're a, you know, a repeat buyer, it's still going to be the same. Great points. We have one last question here. That's, um, um, Solid. I'll just read it. <laughs> thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the po best podcast in a while, guys. Very informative here. Thanks for addressing my question. I love when you guys answer viewer questions, at least if they are good questions. Uh, I have one question. We keep hearing in the news about Canada being one of the highest indebted countries in the world when it comes to personal debt. I also hear of many mortgages coming up for renewal for the uh, in the next few years. Do you think this could lead to defaults and increased listings in the near future? If you were to guess, or will the Bank of Canada bring down rates by then to avert many defaults do you guys think this is just sensationalism by the mainstream media and we should not worry about this happy almost birthday by the way paul mm -hmm. um do you guys want to touch on that yeah i mean in so i know we've we said it many a number of episodes ago uh there was 1.1 million mortgages coming up for renewal in 2023 two-thirds of them have yet to renew um the remaining two thirds is, is to come uh, from now until the end of 2023. I think no matter what, I think it is a little bit of sensual, uh, sensationalization, if I can say the word correctly. Sensationalized. Um, <laughs> tongue twister this morning. Um, you know, people in Canada will pay their homes first. Um, they will, you know, they will avoid or, or miss payments on other aspects first, um, like consumer debt. People have a tendency, they don't want to lose their home. They will make their mortgage payments. When qualifying for those mortgages five years ago, they were doing so based on a stress test then as well. Um, so the payment that they were qualifying on was effectively uh, what they rate that they'd be qual that they'd be renewing at now. Um, back then it would have been, you know, five and a quarter, 4.79 roughly as the, um, as that qualifying rate. And that's, you know, 
but now that's what their payment would be. However, they've paid down the mortgage over five years. So really what they can do is, is as they're up for renewal as well, is re-amortize their mortgage. So stretch it back out now to back to 25 or back to 30 years, uh, which is just going to shrink that payment as well and make it more affordable or you know consolidate some consumer debt that's going to help them again increase their cash flow. And really over that five years, regardless of what industry you're in, you've likely seen um, you know, obviously costs of living have gone up, but so have incomes. Uh, so the likelihood is even if you've been in the same, um, same position for those five years, you've seen a rise in your, your income level over that period of time too. So there are a few factors that, you know, will kind of allow people as they come up for renewal to still be able to make those payments, um, and, and, you know, really speak to their, uh, you know, their mortgage broker of, of how, you know, what their budget is and, and how they can renew and, and maintain that, that home. I, I don't see, I don't see our default rates, you know, skyrocketing by any means with, with what tools are out there in order to uh, allow people to, to kind of requalify. Yeah, I think we may see some people getting creative. He was asking about more listings. I think there might be people, especially with the stats that Greg's mentioning and also, if they're coming up for renewal, people might at least have that conversation with their partner or whomever about, well, maybe we should downsize. Like we can take advantage of this, mm -hmm. you know, high price point. We can move maybe a bit outside the city. We're both working from home now or what have you. So I think that there'll be more of those conversations. Now, whether or not that actually happens is a different question, but I think where years ago, people wouldn't even contemplate moving. Now there might be that, that decision to be made. Um, but I did hear last week that the um, car financing defaults had increased. They were on the rise, but mortgages were still quite low. So you would assume people pay their mortgage first, car second, and then so on. So, you know, obviously no crystal ball, but I would imagine if the car defaults are increasing, then home defaults may be next, at least slightly. But as you said, Dave, like we haven't seen it in historically Canadian mortgage defaults are outrageously low i think the last time we looked it was like 0.15 percent or something it was like mm -hmm. well under one percent mm -hmm. uh so we'll keep an eye on that number though to see if if the defaults do increase maybe we can do a month to month um you know default percentage just to kind of keep keep an eye on that and uh appease mm -hmm. appease the listeners make sure that they're getting what they mm -hmm. want what they come here for mm -hmm. which is default numbers <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Yes, yes. Well, should we uh, slide into the uh, mood boost here, Paul? Yeah, definitely. I think we had a very rough start today, gentlemen. I think we were all asleep, alert. We had we had our allergies buzzing. We were, you know, it's a Monday, but I, I still feel we, asleep. I think we 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 start we we ended better than we started. Let's put it that way. Um, okay, <laughs> I got three today. Three boosts. Uh, number one, people are usually shocked that I have a police record. I just love their greatest hits. Mm. That was for Greg. Number two, what do you call a fibbing cat? A lion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A lion. And number three, I used this one a long time ago, so sorry if you've heard it. How do you weigh a millennial in Instagrams? in instagram those are all actually pretty good paul my laughing level was minimal today but they were all <laughs> very good jokes oh the you're just on mute i thought the police one was hilarious <laughs> yeah uh we will be I'm back just in the mood i guess i'm just in a mood we uh we'll be back next week we will be back i want to give a quick shout out to uh to um my parents bill and kathy uh celebrating 47 years of marriage today congratulations big number <laughs> And um, we will be back next week, everyone, every Tuesday at 10 a.m. You can catch us on YouTube on all your streaming platforms. Be sure to subscribe, comment, and uh, leave your questions. If there's any special guests or anyone you want to see on the show, let us know and we'll, we'll make that happen. Otherwise, we will, uh, we will see you next week. Thanks for listening. Goodbye, gentlemen. Ciao, ciao. Cheers. for tuning in everyone we hope you enjoyed today's episode please remember to like share comment and subscribe because we'd really like that